Is your brain quietly starving for zinc? Well, about one in five people in the world, according to research, are not getting anywhere near enough zinc. They're at risk for inadequate zinc intake. And if we're trying to keep this brain as strong as possible, as long as possible, we should very well better make sure we're getting enough zinc. In this video, I'm gonna go through uh, how some research on that and how it affects the brain. What are the most uh, common ways that we should be getting zinc and some tools to help you know whether or not you are getting enough zinc. But first, let's take a look here at the uh, scope of the problem. Estimated 17% of global population is at risk of inadequate zinc intake, prevalence as high as 19% and 24% in Asia and Africa, respectively. And I would argue that whenever you see these numbers, when they say adequate, I, I question what that means, because does it mean adequate to keep you from having an overt disease state? And that's usually what it means. So is that anywhere near adequate to actually satisfy all of the physiological needs of zinc in the human body? Now, before you run out and go grab a zinc supplement and start chugging it, wait till I talk to you about balance of that. And I'm going to get into that a little bit, but let's talk a little more about the brain and how it's specific for the brain. Zinc has a profound effect on the brain uh, throughout human life, from the development of the neonatal brain to neurological conditions. Sounds like it's pretty important to the brain to me. Um, zinc homeostasis in the central nervous system is regulated by a complex interplay of components, including permeability, the blood-brain barrier, activity of zinc binding proteins and ion channels. There is so much need for zinc in the body. We really have to start being much more aware of our zinc levels if we're going to, in fact, make sure that our brains can stay as strong as possible, as long as possible. This is from the important role of zinc in neurological conditions. And you can see here, it's got a role in the immune system and DNA and RNA synthesis, homeostasis, signal, uh, transduction, protein and enzymes. So pretty much everything going on in the body we need to have zinc for. And remember, there's this triage theory. If we don't have enough zinc to be able to take care of all of these, we have to make a choice. Which one is it going to do? In fact, that is how essential nutrients work. We can't just assume that we have enough to go around. We have to employ strategies to ensure that we do. Furthermore, this is very important, the uh, both extremes, either zinc deficiency and overloaded conditions, exacerbate brain damage or harmful immune response. Therefore, maintaining a moderate concentration of zinc is important in maintaining normal physiological function. More importantly than that is to talk about the balance of zinc with the other nutrients in the body. And the most important one that we need to remember is copper and zinc ratio with aging and health status. This is very important to keep in mind. So now I'm gonna just jump in and share uh, some of the information that I uh, share in my uh, presentation on mental health and zinc. So this is from a mental health seminar that I give. Very important to know that there were only two trace minerals in the study that were linked to people living over 100 and they were zinc and copper. So this is a 2011 study of the micronutrient status of healthy centenarians. The data analysis found that only zinc and copper or copper and zinc concentrations showed a normal distribution. So two things to really focus on because the people who are living to 100 have this, this one down pretty well. So they said there's no significant difference between men and, and women except for zinc. Men need even more zinc potentially. However, the levels of aluminum, cadmium, chromium, iron, molybdenum, lead decrease in the levels of barium, copper, uh, selenium, strontium, and zinc increase with age in the centenarian cohort. So what is this implying? That there is a way to manipulate the trace elements when it comes to longevity. And uh, I'm going to skip a few slides here because I don't want to just stick too much to what's going on with the mental health piece. We can do that another time. But I want to show you that there is a way that you can test it. Uh, you can test it in the blood. But even easier than that, there is this really cool zinc taste test. In fact, it's very simple. All you do is hold it in your mouth for about you know 10 seconds, and then you tell us what you're tasting. And now these are things that you can get through certain practitioners. Um, if you are looking to get a hold of this, you can contact our office and we can get these sent out to you. In fact, every new client gets a bottle of this because we want their, them to not only test themselves regularly for the rest of their life till bell beyond 100, but we also want them to have their family tested, testing themselves too. So the way that this works is they typically say, if you don't taste it at all, you have a severe deficiency. 
And the less you taste it, the worse it is. So the more you taste it, the better your zinc status is. And so I always want people to know it's not just about longevity and zinc. It also can affect your hair loss. A lot of research on that. It could affect the skin quality, testosterone production, immune function. All of these require adequate zinc. So there's many reasons why we should be checking our zinc status. And as I promised, here are the foods that I think are really important for you to put your focus on if you want to make sure you're getting a balance of zinc and copper. Oysters, of course, are one of nature's multivitamins. Uh, they just lack fiber, as far as I can tell. Uh, pumpkin seeds are another one of nature's multivitamins, also giving you fiber, but a great combination of copper and zinc, the cashews and the pecans. Now, just a couple of very important points on these. They must be organic if you're using them as a multivitamin to get the zinc and the copper, because without it being organic, you cannot guarantee that you're getting it into the plant. They have to be raw uh, because if they are cooked, you are denaturing a lot of it and, and causing a lesser value to you from a nutritionist nutrition standpoint. And sprouting it helps your body really get the most value out of it from a nutrition standpoint. Now, I also want to point out here, I haven't said here that you do want to be aware of the geographical location that they're grown because you want to make sure that the soil has zinc and copper. And these were three products that I represented in the uh, seminar I was teaching that give us this interesting ratio. There's something called zinc complex and it's got a 50 to one ratio. I, I don't think that that is the normal ratio, but it is when you're trying to create balance, we have these different options. 59 to one to ratio, and one of my favorites, if you're really low on zinc, that's gonna be something called Neuroplex. I love this product. It is, it is a powerful brain support and also gives you your vitamin Bs uh, that are really important to brain. But here's the one I love. Trace Minerals B12. This is basically, it comes from a plant source, so kelp. And so you've got this nine to one ratio of zinc to copper. Now this is pretty close to what I think is the healthiest ratio in nature. And of course, nature is providing it for us with that food. And it's also giving us a little bit of iodine in there. Now I'm not saying that these are the perfect products for everybody or everybody should be taking those products, but there's some options for you. And the, the biggest takeaway I want to share with you on this is if you want to keep your brain healthy, you should be checking in on your zinc levels. And one of the easiest ways you can do that is with a zinc taste test. And one of the easiest ways that you can make sure that you're getting it balanced with other nutrients is getting it from these whole food options like kelp, like pumpkin seeds, like oysters. There's a lot of them out there, but just if you're integrating those there, there's a lot that you can do for the whole health of your body just to, to make sure that you're you're yeah, satisfying it, not just from this overt disease state situation, but to make sure every physiological function in your body has zinc. One to check in on and regularly, especially for your brain health. We're going to go through uh, in this whole series, a, a bunch of nutrients that I think have to be given some love and attention in order to make sure that you're maintaining the strongest brain you can for as long as possible. And so uh, keep asking the questions in the comments if you have any more specific things you want me to detail for this, but I hope this is helpful. Check your zinc and I'll see you in the next video.